Good afternoon and welcome to TL Physics. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to talk about the formation of standing waves. In previous videos I've spoken about how waves interact through diffraction. So a wave goes through a gap and it spreads out and it diffracts. Um, and when they reach the screen it interferes with other parts of the wave and you get constructs of a destructive interference. A standing wave is interference, but it's a wave interfering with itself. And in fact, it's a wave interfering with its own reflection. So what happens is this string here is oscillated into a wave. And when it hits this wall here, it is reflected back. And it's that interaction, that interference between the wave and its reflection that we see a resultant wave. We see a standing wave being formed. Now it's important to know this only happens at certain frequencies. Now how we draw a standing wave is we draw it like this. Sometimes you may see the second line done in dashes. Sometimes you'll see it solid. And this is the resultant wave from the forward wave and its reflection. So at this point here, my forward wave is at a peak. My backward wave is also at a peak. This dotted line is also a situation that could occur that my forward wave could be at a trough and my backward wave could be at a trough and it makes this negative wave. This here, this point here, are known as the antinodes. <clears throat> and this is the point of peak constructive interference between the wave and its reflection. So peak constructive interference between forward wave and reflection. This point here, this point where the waves, there is nothing, this resultant wave has zero, is where the forward wave is like that, and the backward wave is like that. Or, of course, it could be the other way around. Either way, they have maximum or peak destructive interference. This area is called a node. So a node has maximum destructive interference between wave and its reflection. So that is at a node. So at this anti-node, you have peak constructive interference between the forward wave and its reflection. And at the node, you have maximum destructive interference between the wave and its reflection. Remember that waves superpose upon each other. That they, when they come meet each other, they interfere and they create a resultant wave. And that is what we see. We don't see both of them. The word superimpose means that you, like if you superimpose your image on a picture, you can clearly see your image on the picture. There are two different objects. You can see both of them. Waves superpose. Waves interfere and we see a resultant wave. So a standing wave is literally a wave 
being reflected back and interfering with its reflection. You have anti-nodes and nodes and it's really important in the exam that you make a clear point about the anti-node is where you get maximum constructive interference and a node is maximum destructive interference. An anti-node is where the most energy is transferred. And this is important for your microwave. So if you've ever had a situation where your microwave has not spun, this is because the microwave emits waves and they reflect back and you get a standing wave produced. And your food at this region, this region and this region will get most of its energy, which is why you only get hot spots if it doesn't rotate. When it rotates, different parts of your food will fill these anti-nodes from the microwave. So that is how standing waves are formed. It's all to do with interference through reflection.